Welcome back to 12 Days in March. In this last presentation, we'll review dental lesions, the miscellaneous topics, and bring it home with a series of questions. Insofar as dental topics, let's start with a review of erosion and etiologies, followed by a brief mention of caries and abscesses. Dental erosion is caused by acid, which demineralizes the enamel, revealing the dentin and eventually the pulp below. Erosion can cause cold and hot sensitivity, as well as pain due to the exposed pulp. Dental erosion have numerous causes, but on the boards, it's often linked with GERD and bulimia, sharing in common tooth exposure to erosive gastric acid. In tooth erosion due to bulimia, the bottom teeth are often more eroded than the top as acid pools in the lower mouth. Inflammatory peritidis accompanies this condition and the patient may be reported with Russell's sign. This is a classic sign of bulimia described by calluses on the back of the hand from self-induced vomiting. Bacteria in the mouth produce acid as they metabolize sugar. This acid can also cause dental erosion if excessive amounts of sugar are eaten or a patient does not have proper oral hygiene. In this case, the erosion is more focal and leads to tooth caries. Bacteria in the mouth, especially strep mutans, a strain of strep viridans, contributes to dental caries. An abscess can occur when local tooth decay or infection spreads deep into the tooth through the root and then into the tissue surrounding the root of the tooth. The abscess is a walled-off, purulent infection that might spread to extraoral cavities. Last but not least, we'll briefly review the other miscellaneous category, including TMJ, medications with oral effects, and a brief mention of subacute bacterial endocarditis prophylaxis. TMJ syndrome is a disorder of the temporomandibular joint that presents with pain and stiffness of the jaw as well as clicking with jaw movement. It can be caused by malalignment of the joint, trauma, or bruxism, which reflects muscular strain from clenching or grinding the teeth at night or during the day with stress. You should be familiar with this common clinical entity, but board questions on this entity will be few and far between. Now we'll talk about oral manifestations of medications. There are two oral manifestations, including tooth discoloration and gingival hyperplasia. That will be the board language directing you to the adverse effects of certain medications. Tooth discoloration can occur with demeclocycline, an ADH antagonist used to treat SIADH, and the tetracycline class of antibiotics. Tooth discoloration may be manifested in the fetus if used during pregnancy and is irreversible for children if consumed under the age of 8. Gingival hyperplasia, which is defined as gum overgrowth around the teeth, can occur with use of phenytoin, an anti-seizure medication, nifedipine, a calcium channel blocker, and cyclosporin, an immunosuppressant. This is not uncommon and you will most assuredly encounter this entity in your clinical careers. And the final topic on this long journey is subacute bacterial endocarditis, which is frequently caused by strains of bacteria residing in the oral cavity with viridin strep species topping the list. For those at high risk of SBE, defined by prior valve surgery, prior endocarditis, or with rheumatic valve disease, antibiotic prophylaxis with amoxicillin is recommended. Any dental procedure that perforates the oral mucosa warrants prophylaxis for those at high risk. A detailed presentation of endocarditis is presented in the cardiology section of 12 Days in March. So this concludes our series of presentations on oral health topics for USMLE Step 1. We'll finish up with a couple of questions to make sure you're on the ball. Question 1. A 53-year-old woman presents with history of a painless lump in the region of the right parotid that has been there for at least a year. Recently, however, it seems larger. She has gained 5 pounds during this time. Physical exam reveals a firm mass and no lymphadenopathy. What is the most likely diagnosis? The correct answer is choice D, pleomorphic adenoma. This benign tumor can be slow growing and presents most often as a painless mass. Lymphadenopathy would not be expected. You will recognize bacterial parotitis as an acute painful disorder often presenting with constitutional symptoms. Mucoepidermoid carcinoma may cause pain, especially if involving the facial nerve, and lymphadenopathy may be described. An obstructive stone would also cause pain, especially in relation to meals. Question 2. A mother presents to her family doctor to discuss the appearance of her adopted child's teeth. She admits to not taking her son to the dentist regularly, and he eats a lot of sugar. He is also deaf and has vision issues. She asks if something can be done for his teeth. What is the most likely diagnosis? And the answer is choice B, congenital syphilis. 
This graphic shows the distinctive Hutchinson teeth that accompany congenital syphilis, which can also cause deafness and vision issues. And just as a reminder, mulberry molars are the other oral pathology finding present in congenital syphilis. Insofar as the other options, dental caries are manifested by local discoloration in areas where bacteria have led to significant tooth erosion. In utero, doxycycline exposure can cause tooth discoloration. Genetic tooth deformity, like osteogenesis imperfecta or dentinogenesis, would result in opalescent teeth rather than malformed teeth. And with that, my friends, we have reached the end of this section on oral health for step one. I know that it has been a long journey, but having covered this extensive list of topics, there are a few surprises left that the NBME can reveal on test day. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.